Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Wizard Factory podcast, where you subscribe for weekly episodes exploring deeper knowledge of the universe and yourself. My name is Logan Hart. And I'm Brian Easterday. And if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a part of, the, of, the, of our family. And um, if you have not checked out our website yet, thewizardfactory.com, uh, and go check out our, our initiation package. It's totally free, a uh, little web training that we put together. You can download it. It's got a bunch of other extra uh, goodies, and that link is in the description. Also, if you watched our episode from last week about leadership, we mentioned that we uh, were doing a live webinar and that replay is now available for uh, watching as well. If you want to click that link is also in the description as well. So without further ado, let's dive into tonight's episode, which is all about travel and how that pertains to the hero's journey, essentially. So um, yeah, Brian, would you like to start us off this time? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of, you know, a lot of this, um, I learned kind of my experience. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it, but you know, I think it was about six years ago now or something. I was working a, a job as like hardware manager at a, a large retail chain, like 70 hours a week. And I just got really tired of it. And I kind of felt like my soul was being torn in two. And the urge to just go travel to kind of just take a backpack and, and just go hitchhike around. Uh, hit me really strongly, and that was uh, really part of the process that helped uh, my my whole my kind of awakening process in general. So I got out, and one of the big things that I think is useful in getting out and traveling is the first thing it does is it immediately pushes you outside of your comfort zone, which is where all growth starts to happen. Like in my personal case, I I really kind of had the goal of going out there to find myself. And that's exactly what happened throughout that journey. I had a lot of very interesting experiences uh, and adventures while I was out there doing all that, but it, it really radically shifted my mindset and how I started to look at the world because I had simply left the area where I was brought up. So you have to understand that like you have an influence from your family and society or your friends, all those people around you and wherever you grow up, that kind of creates a certain environment, a certain kind of reality, you could say even. And then as you move outside, outside of that, that allows you to experience uh, different parts of reality, you know, different places, different ways of thinking and different ways of being. And then, and that really does something very interesting for your brain, you know? So uh, I find that, um, find that very useful for sure. Yeah, it is. It's very ironic, isn't it? That you, uh, just this, this archetypal story of going, going somewhere, leaving, going somewhere only to find yourself when right. the irony is that you were there with you the whole time. Right. Uh, and you know, so there's a lot of different ways we can, uh, we can kind of slice into this uh i as well have some history some experience with travel i'm not sure how many of our viewers know this but i was in the uh, united states air force and i spent two years of my life stationed over in england so i got to uh experience a, a, a good little bit of europe probably not as much as i would have liked i was too busy being young and stupid and you know drinking my brain cells away but i did i did do some travel around europe and um uh, I may not have realized it at the time, but there was a lot of things about that that was acting as a sort of initiation for me. Um, and, and whether that's a conscious thing or not, that seems to be something that goes very hand in hand with that beginning of the journey. Uh, this, as we were brainstorming ideas also for this episode, it made me think of the part in The Hobbit, which is the prequel to The Lord of the Rings, where you know, Gandalf came to find Bilbo in his home where he's all nice and cozy and he's having his tea and, and biscuits and everything. And um, Gandalf, in a way, had to kind of drag him out like he didn't want to leave. You know what I mean? Um, the, that, that comfort zone is, is what we're getting at here is um, to, to go on a journey, you have to leave behind what's familiar to you. And, and dive into the unknown because, you know, when we talk about being a spiritual warrior and that fearlessness, 
uh, that's that's definitely part of it is, I mean, in my opinion, all fear is fear of the unknown. So by stepping out of what you know, especially if it's where you grew up and you've been there your whole life, and then stepping out, there's a whole big world out there. And there's so many different experiences that you can have and different things. Um, and um, we talk a lot on this channel about stagnation is death. And you're not doing anything if you're not pushing yourself outside of that comfort zone. Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's kind of funny to remember that, that you know, it's called the hero's journey, not the hero's stroll around the block. <laughs> you know, like getting out there and going on an adventure that's really, really interesting. I, I love that you used, you know, Bilbo as an archetype and an example, you know, knowing you know, I'm, I'm a huge Tolkien fan and that's, that's such a great example of uh, the hero's journey being demonstrated where he, you know, he was very comfort, comfortable where he was. Uh, and he, he had no urge to even go out there, but then like so, something called him, something happened and he didn't even necessarily, necessarily know what it was or why he said yes when he went, but then, you know, ended up being the, the greatest experience of his life. And, you know, those who, who have read the book realize that that, that decision, you know, that really drastically changed the, the course of history there, you know, in that, in that series. So yeah, just to, just to uh, add on there too, because this kind of hit me just now is you could almost view that allegory from the perspective that Gandalf may have even just been a part of Bilbo himself where Bilbo, the character in the story, is representing just that um, living life on autopilot, living as everyone else does in, in Hobbiton, uh, and, and Ganoff is sort of his inner wizard that is stirring something deep within him to go on that adventure and go, go seek something you know, new. That What was it called? An unexpected, the unexpected, An unexpected journey. journey. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's very interesting because the, the whole Shire, you know, all the hobbits, they, they generally kind of have that, that very comfortable lifestyle and that view of very easygoing, you know, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, Gandalf, he's a disturber of the peace, you know, <laughs> as he gets labeled. <laughs> so, you know, like most, most wizards will tend to be, they like to shake things up. And then Bilbo so, kind of gained that reputation as well because he's right. that, he's that one kind of He's that weird one, that strange one, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. He likes adventures, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the place to be, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and a, another really interesting kind of thing I learned in my experience as I got about in the world was just how big the world can be, but mm -hmm. also how small. It, it's kind of a very, you know, ironic thing, um, you know, like funny, you know, like a funny story. I got out, you know, and when I was in California, I, I had my plan was to not have a plan other than to just get dropped off wherever I saw, you know, like I was just going to look around wherever I it looked like some good nature. I was just going to kind of get dropped off there. You know, people told me I was crazy, obviously, and ended up getting dropped off out by like Trinity County in, in Northern California and hiking, hiking this really backwoods road that happened, happens to be like one of, one of the toughest roads in California to actually hike. And I, I had no idea that I just happened to, just happened to pick that one and was hiking, you know, hiking down into the Round Valley Covalo. So it, it's really just out in the middle of nowhere. But yet on this road, someone was driving by and they happened to stop to talk to us or whatever. And the person happened to be from like Derby, Kansas, which was, you know, just, you know, like we, we, our high schools played each other, you know, in sports or whatever. So even though I'm out there, you know, in, in the middle of nowhere or whatever, you meet someone from where you are. So the world, you know, you see that, that how it's just, it's so big. That there's so much out there, but yet it's, it's so small and so interesting and interconnected at the same time. That, you know, it's a really beautiful lesson. Uh, kind of like your complicated simplicity in a way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's extremely, extremely funny things will happen when you get out and start traveling. So um, yeah, and, and another big thing for me when I got out there is I, it, it was a major mindset for me is I started to learn how to see abundance everywhere, you know, because looking at what you start looking at, like, you know, the different trees, like there's certain type of uh, tree out there that they call pitch wood, you know, that it has a very heavy sap in there. So you can take a very small log of it that with a normal wood that you would just burn that in a few minutes, you can take that up and split it into very tiny little strips and that will last as a fire and burn all through all through the night, keep you warm. 
so you start looking around and you start seeing all these resources, seeing like mushrooms and, and things. And, and you realize that most people would just look around and they would just see some woods. They wouldn't recognize all the abundance, all the resources there. And that, for me, that was kind of like a representation of the, uh, the veil of muggle thinking being removed, I guess would be a way to put it. You start seeing the world as a magical place, as an abundant place with all the resources that you need. Uh, and, and you start recognizing that instead of just kind of seeing it, but never really actually seeing it, you know? Um, so, and that was a major shift for me when I started to look, look for the hidden things that were there in plain sight, you know? Right, right. It's, it's more, again, that, that discovery process because those trees, uh, the different towns, where, wherever you might go, it's always been there almost waiting for you if you you want to perceive it that way it was waiting for you to take those first steps and to go seek it out it's that curiosity that that should be driving us but is the lack thereof keeping us stuck and stagnant as we are because that's the way the social engineers prefer it um spiritually dead for for you know all intents and purposes and so on that vein you know, and again, we talk about stagnation versus uh, growth, like you're, ch you're changing your environment for growth, because that's what's conducive to that is seeking new experiences. Um, it, it, essentially, you're, you're, you're seeking out, uh, for, I guess you, you could say from a, a, a natural law perspective, uh, natural law must include experience it, it that is the experience of natural law uh, i don't know it's it's such an inherent part it's hard to even articulate it because it's it's so integral to that mm -hmm. is we learn we uh, advance and level our consciousness by going and seeking out new experiences and by which to interact with the laws of nature that teach us and we grow through that process so especially if you're from like a small town like I grew up in, you're, you're just not going to get that uh, in that, that dusty old town there where nothing ever happens and, and you know, the police are out looking for people to mess with because they're bored, you know, that sort of thing. Um, this is the exact other end of that spectrum is, you know, new uh, uh, environments like new uh, climates and vegetation and people and cultures and all that kind of thing there's so much to be gained from that and interacting with that, especially because this is a world of people largely, mm -hmm. you know, it, but also in the world. And I mean, I guess you, you could see that this, this topic could sort of diverge as you were talking about learning those lessons from the forest of abundance and resourcefulness. And, and that's just you and nature and that's natural law. And you're interacting with nature through the, the, the laws of nature there, but then also, uh, as the cosmic mind principle of mentalism interacting with yourself by way of other cultures, because they're just different versions of you living mm -hmm. life in different kinds of ways. And, and it just expands what you know to be true about yourself, about human nature, about what's possible, about different ways to live and ways of doing things. I mean, there, there's, it's just so abundant. Mm -hmm. Abundance is definitely seeming to be a theme of this. Yeah, absolutely. One, you know, it's, it's funny when you say it that way too, because you think about it, uh, if you're not having a new experience by default, you're, you're not growing because you're, you're not experiencing anything new. So, I mean, that's, that really is simple, but when you understand it, it's very profound that you have, if you're really wanting to grow and to challenge yourself as a person, you have to be seeking out those new experiences. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and so when you travel, that's creating that environment for growth to happen, you know, both within, within you, like as the individual on an internal level, but, you know, externally, you're going and having those external experiences as, as well. You know, um, another great thing about travel is it really helps you conquer your fears, uh, especially, you know, if you're like, you know, like Logan and I were from the Midwest or something, or like a small little, you know, podunk farming town, uh, you, there's, so there's such a like a fear-based mindset you know especially like in the bible though of you know the people are out there you know the, there's all, all these dangerous things out there and then you mm -hmm. start to get out there and you you actually experience it and you're like oh, this, this is actually really cool people aren't nearly as bad as what everybody 
mm. said they were. And you realize that these were all just fears that were limiting beliefs that are just keeping everybody, you know, in these tiny little towns, just trapped, you know, and, and afraid to go out there and, and experience anything new. And then that's, of course, a death and stagnation, as we talked about before, which interestingly enough, in places like Bible Belt, there's, you know, probably a good reason that stagnation is the norm. <laughs> yeah. <No doubt. laughs> that's interesting that's, correlation. <laughs> and that's, that's definitely very interesting, again, from this context of being a, a spiritual warrior uh, it, to, to conquer your fears. But also uh, what you were saying there kind of sparked a, a new angle of perspective on this about what the narrative about the world is that is the benefit of the agenda of the control system versus reality because we know the especially like the media and the stories that they choose to highlight and focus on or even just downright fabricate to create this idea that's a big scary world out there and that's why we need like the government to keep us safe and you shouldn't travel like you could you know like go to mexico and you'll get and, and of course yeah. there's a new outbreak of a deadly disease or some shit like that <laughs> yeah. sure sure and and I, don't get me wrong i'm not saying that there aren't cer certain countries that are more dangerous than others i'm certainly not saying that bad things you know don't happen but compared to the story that they're trying to portray whether you know blatantly or covertly it, it when you actually travel not only do you find out it's it's not the same like um it, it was a lot worse in your head than what you found it to be in your experience but then that by default is going to kind of disillusion you to a lot of the other things that we just kind of accept as true about things and you so well you know if 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 this is all bullshit, what else is bullshit? And it just kind of cascades. And so it makes sense why they want you to kind of stay put, just put your nose to the grindstone, do your job, you know, uh, because it, it, it will lead vision. to the, the crumbled their house of cards that they mm. put a lot of energy into uh, constructing for us. So very interesting, uh, I think, to, to look at that because, you know, again, and, you know, like I, I went to Mexico and, you know, there's, there's lots of stories of things happening and many of them are true, but at the same time, I went out and I experienced, uh, the people of Mexico, they were so kind. They, I hadn't even touched down to Mexico and there was a, a, a resident on the plane that overheard me talking, knew that I was traveling there for the first time and handed me a piece of paper with all her favorite restaurants in Acapulco and what to order, what the good stuff was. And I was just like, that's awesome. That, that blows your mind because yeah, again, there are a lot of bad people. There's a lot of bad things that happen, but for the most part, people are good. People are caring. People like there's so much love in the world and you're going to experience that the more you expect, uh, experience the rich culture and all the other, other scary people that we're told to fear. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, that's a great, a great point is that you get to go out and experience those other cultures and see like beautiful sights, you know, like, you know, um, I've been to so many like cool places, like being up on the top of, you know, 14ers in the Rockies, you know, on like the top of the continental divide, like and being able to see like either way for miles and miles and see clouds below you, like that's an amazing thing. And there's, the, you know, I've seen redwoods and, you know, it's so many cool things. And just even that alone is worth traveling just to go see the, the variety of the different landscapes and things uh, that we have available, especially if you're like a person like me that you grew up in Kansas, there's, there's not a whole lot going on here, you know? So to get out and go see uh, mountains and these, these ancient forests, all these different things, that's a, a, a totally new experience. And even just seeing that, seeing that the world isn't just this one boring little place that there's so much variety out there, it, it has a radical shift in your mindset. And I think that's why you see when people the people uh, who do go out and travel and who do do those things, they're the people that tend to be a little more learned about the world. They, they tend to have a, a wider and broader perspective and see things a little more clearly because they have that experience to fall back on. Right. You know, and going out there, you know, one of the big things for me too is realizing that, you know, there's all this, all these amazing, you know, things and kind of culture and aspects in the world 
that that people just have different ways of being and it's very interesting to learn what those are and then to be able to bring you know bring those back or to bring those stories back you know to share with other people when you do come back home uh because a lot of those people will like haven't left any you know ever left there they're just so terrified to even try that you know hear, hearing you know things that oh there's exciting adventures there's all sorts of things you could go on like if you're just willing to that you know being just sharing a simple story like that could inspire someone to be like, okay, I'm, I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to go move here. I'm going to go do whatever because I wanted to, and I've just been too afraid. So, so you never know like the power of your story and how that could inspire or impact someone else. Oh yeah. That's, that's a great point. And, and um, you know, you could, you could kind of tie this to how, like you mentioned earlier about the personal journey and how it's very transformative of yourself, but let's always remember that we're co-creating reality. So not only are you becoming a, a well-traveled, uh, more advanced person as an individual, but then you are then continuing to inhabit reality with everyone else and exude that and share those experiences with them. And that may be the thing that inspired them to go on their own hero's journey or pil pilgrimage right. or whatever it may be. And just imagine how much better the world would be just if everyone traveled and, and, kind of blurred those lines of, you know, borders and different cultures and all those things that are literally there to keep us divided and think in, and separated of like, this is us and this is how we are and they're very different and we, you know, we don't get along or whatever it is. You, you, the more you travel, the more you realize we're not that different and uh, people just want to live happy, healthy lives, raise their children create beautiful things, you know, architecture and, and uh, the richness of history. And that's another thing I was going to add to um, what we were talking about with the culture as well, especially, um, you know, as I said, I spent two years in England and, and, and experiencing some different, I also went to a, a city called Bruges, which is in Belgium. And it's actually the, the oldest standing medieval city in Europe because it was never bombed during the war. So every structure there is hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And it's, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, it's like a fairy tale, honestly. And that's just something, especially here in America, you just don't get that. I mean, the America, you know, was, was founded only a couple of, uh, a few hundred years ago. And you just don't get that riches of history or even, as I said, in the architecture, I, I used to remark about how you could just be driving down some country road and passing these little seemingly insignificant, you know, huts and houses that have thatched roofs and stuff like that. Very simple homes, but comparing that to the cookie cutter homes of, you know, urban America, it, it, there's just this, this substance to them. It, even though it's just a simple, small square home, it just has this richness and this substance to it that that is not anywhere to be found. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of like um, you know how like in magic you can build up your charisma. Sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> uh, you can build up your charisma and your charts like over over a period of time. It, really, the same thing with uh, like a geographical area. That it, especially if it had a lot of very intense, very emotionally, uh, psychically charged events happening there that charge will then be retained, um, you know, and th I think that's why people, you know, all of the world enjoy traveling to Europe. I mean, think of all the, the just historical events and all, all the different things that you can go see. There's a lot of world changing events that happen there. Uh, a lot of charge built up over the last, you know, few mm. thousand years, especially. Um, and, and that's there to be carried and to be tapped into. And that, you know, that kind of leads me to thinking about that, traveling especially to places of like your ancestral uh lineage or heritage those those can be very impactful in fact like people will go to to places um you know like megalithic sites or things like that and they'll, they'll say things like i feel like i've already you know i've been here before or they'll just you know they'll feel very emotionally connected to it you know mm -hmm. that and that's because you know that that memory is in your blood even though you may have never been to, to europe before you know and they i think recently i was just reading an article that they found like epigenetic memory goes back like 14 generations or something like that wow. you know so if you're, if you're thinking about that yeah you it, you could have been you know 10 generations ago or whatever but that memory that's still there so you're starting to like awaken blood codes in yourself you know and i, I kind of had a personal experience with this um 
in my own right, uh, it was probably, let's see, when was it? Probably about eight or nine years ago, I was living in uh, South Dakota up by the Black Hills. And uh, a lot of you may not be uh, familiar with the idea. Obviously, I'm of, of European heritage, but uh, I also have uh, Cheyenne. My great-grandmother was Cheyenne and was born on a resi up there. Um, and whenever I went up to the Black Hills and was in that area, there was a, one day that I just, I actually got the chance to go out and just kind of explore around the woods there and just felt the urge to kind of start running. And I, I was just jogging and uh, by the end of the day, you know, I'd, I'd spent like eight hours and ran like, it was like 10 miles or something and, and it didn't even feel like I ran that far. It was just, there's something about it, whether it was just the call to go, like I saw this rock and I want to go climb on, you know, and I ran over there and did that. And that, I just spent the whole day just being out there because and it felt like just something was awakening in me. Like I'd been there before. There was just some, some kind of a charge there that it, it just felt very familiar, very at home. And, and I think that's, you know, a very interesting thing to observe, you know, so going to those places where your ancestors lived or where they're from, and then being able to, to feel what that land feels like, that's, a, that's something that I, I think a lot of people will maybe neglect or, or fail to, to think as of one of the benefits of traveling or even just traveling for that purpose. Like, you know, you and I obviously have um, projects and documentaries that we're going to be producing and working on in the future where we're going to be traveling. Uh, to Europe to go film a lot of these megalithic sites and ancient structures and things like that. And that's, you know, not only for the documentary, but for our own personal experience. That's one of the things we want to go. We want to achieve, we want to be able to go up and put our hands on those stones uh, mm -hmm. and, and to look around at those landscapes and, and feel what that feels like. That, that's something that shouldn't be discounted. And people, you know, I think if you start, you know, thinking about that, even traveling to your ancestral lands just to see what you can activate within yourself. So it's a whole other realm to be tapped into there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's no surprise with as much as we've been uh, very forcefully cut off from our own roots and made in told lies about how we talk a lot about on this show that, that are just made to believe that our ancestors were just dumb barbarians who didn't know any better. Uh, so why would people seek out those experiences to connect with that when they feel they've got this sense of like ego superiority of, oh, we're so much more advanced now. And I don't, I don't have any interest in that. Whereas where we're coming from of like the power of connecting with your ancestors, not just from a uh, nostalgic, you know, cool experience kind of way, but in a very deeply spiritual way. Uh, and, and rekindling that connection because I, I believe that that is a very real thing, that the, the DNA inside you is much more than just empty uh, codes and things like that. Like there, there is a very uh, living essence to us and, and we're connected to our ancestors in a very real and scientific way, though it probably still seems kind of woo-woo. I, I would b wager that even in the next five years or less, more and more scientific discoveries will be coming out to, to sort of support this, these, these type of ideas. But mm -hmm. Well, and that's um, interesting too, to say what's, what that's far for me is that, you know, even the people that may be like, uh, they have accepted the gaslighted version of history that our ancestors were barbarians or whatever. So say they may go to Europe because they're wanting to go see some ancient cathedrals or something. But while they're there, they also happen to go see like an ancient megalithic site or that cathedral might have even built, been built on an old pagan site, as we know a lot of these are. Mm -hmm. And when they actually get there, they can't explain it, but something just hits them. Like there's some kind of feeling. There's, some, there's something there that gets awoken in them and they may not understand it. They may not have even been seeking it out, but when they get there, it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, very interesting thing to look at. Right. And you, I mean, even beyond just your, your own ancestries, but just humanity as a whole, as a species, um, were, were travelers. They were nomadic. In fact, if you look at the entire timeline of, I mean, not that you can actually look at the whole timeline because we, we don't know how far back or, you know, the, the less documented it was, but even in documented history, the amount of that that was spent settled and being, uh, you know, more, like entrenched and rooted in a, in one at one stagnant location uh, is very very small in the the grand scheme of things. So our physiology, our programming, our uh, everything is is still operating on that. 
uh, we w that's why people get really stir crazy and restless and um, they, they crave that they want to go out and, and travel and see different things because uh, I mean, whether we're meant to be stationary or not, you, you can debate or argue, but either way, it's, it's sort of unnatural in it, it just as far as our own history goes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think another wonderful thing that travel does is it teaches you to uh, embrace and be comfortable within the chaos. Um, mm -hmm. Cause you know, especially when I was like traveling, just kind of backpacking around uh, and doing the homeless thing just for, for the experience, you know, you may not know where you're going to sleep the next night or where you're going to get like the next uh, food from, or, you know, where, where you're going on your next adventure, but that's kind of the fun thing about it is that you just don't know. Every day is new. It's, it's always a new experience. It's always something different. But, you know, I, that, that need to always know what's going to happen, to always feel safe, I think, I think that's because our society's been so locked into that, that unbalanced ma masculine, that left brain, where they want to pick apart and understand everything. And tapping into that feminine and that chaos, that, that just the beauty of creation, the beauty of life, that you don't necessarily know what the experience is going to be, but you, you're learn, you learn to be okay within that. Because you're, you're, you don't have to feel safe. Like you, you're getting rid of your fears. You're learning to be comfortable within your ability as yourself. Because as you travel, you're learning new skills. You're doing these things. So you become more and more confident in your ability. And that allows you to remain confident uh, within that chaos even. You know, and that, that's a whole different type of mindset than a person who uh, is only comfortable in, in their little area, their niche, and that they're, they're afraid to go anywhere outside of that. You know, you never really actually develop your skill sets as a human being uh, as, as to the highest potential that you could if you don't go test yourself. Right. Yeah, it's ironic, isn't it, that our left brain needs to feel like it knows what's going on and that it understands and that it's in control when the ratio of the known versus the unknown is just like, <laughs> like what, like why, you know, um, yeah. it's just kind of ironic because there, I mean, there is a balance and there is a certain, there's a, we can come to a place of understanding of generally why things happen the way they do and, and that kind of thing. But there's still so much room left for the unknown and the unexpected and anomalies and, and different things uh, to, to occur. Uh, just that little bit of learning to embrace that and, and to, but as opposed to just trying to avoid it or, you know, stay away. Yeah. Just being afraid of it, you know, like, right. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the mystery like, that makes things fun. And like you touched on, it, it teaches you self-reliance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you stay put and you just work your job, you got a job or you got a boss telling you what to do, when to be there, all this kind of stuff. But when you go travel, like you're kind of, the captain of the ship you get to decide when where you go how how you want to get there how long you're going to take where you're going to stop on the way where you're going to eat where you're going to sleep all that kind of stuff you got to manage your money and and all that kind of stuff so it's definitely a sort of a maturing experience just in that way of like you have to be very responsible with how you're doing things and not taking unnecessary risks too because we are talking about stepping outside your comfort zone but that doesn't mean just be totally careless and, and do, I mean, you know, you can get yourself into trouble for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely got myself in a few like interesting situations on my travels for sure. So. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, uh, another very interesting uh, thing here is that when you travel, it gives you a, ver a very interesting opportunity and that's to change like who you are or change your mask, so to speak. And, and what I mean by this is many times when someone stays in like a little small town or wherever they're from and the only people they're around are the same friends and family that they've known their whole life, the same coworkers, there's, they have an image of themselves, but that it, part of that image is built up around of what they think other people perceive of them, right? So when you go travel, you go to a place that's totally new if you were a person back home that may not have been very confident, now all of a sudden you can present yourself that way. Because instead of having all that, that charge, that societal charge of people think, oh, people think I'm a shy person, people think I'm not good at communication, whatever that story is that you've been telling yourself, 
Now all of a sudden you can rewrite that story. You can change what your character does or, or who they, who they are, how they present themselves. And, and it's not to say that you're lying or you're being inauthentic. What you're doing is you're by removing that stigma, that's whatever society or friends think of you or expect of you, you kind of then wipe the slate clean so you can open yourself up to, to put, put on a new costume, uh, represent a new character and kind of come into a new way of being. And that's a very magical act when you think about that. It's a very useful skill uh, to have, uh, to be able to do and to tap into that. And by doing that, you gain those new experiences and, and things like that. So uh, yeah, travel, you know, there's not really a lot of other experiences that allow you in, in such a dramatic way to do that. So if you're feeling like very stagnant and you want to move to a totally new, you know, you see people do this like, oh yeah, I moved and all of a sudden, I totally changed my life. I became a person. I got a really good job. You know, I, you know, met the person or, you know, whatever it is, they left where they were and all of a sudden everything came into, fell into place for them. Mm -hmm. And and that's because it was this magical act of remaking themselves, rebirthing themselves. Yeah. Kind of a clean slate sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, you, you, you had that, that freedom to present yourself any way that you choose to, and nobody's really going to question that because they don't know you from Adam. They're, they're just taking you at face value. Right. And, and you can, you can kind of like take that opportunity to leave your limited mindset behind. Um, there's a lot of things where you can use an external opportunity to make an internal change. Sometimes mm -hmm. all your mind needs to believe something is, an event, even though it's somewhat arbitrary, like traveling to a new region, but if you're attaching to that in your mind of thinking, okay, when this happens, I'm going to do this, or I'm going, you're like looking for that excuse to be safe or be brave enough, I guess you could say, to go for it. So just, you know, like when you're traveling to a new area, literally just like when, I, when, when this happens, I'm going to, you know, kind of repackage myself in, in whichever way I see fit. And I mean, you, you might look at it like you're being someone you're not, or you don't know, you could be, be uh, trying on new masks and one seems more yourself than who you were before. And then maybe something just sticks because you tried this on and wow, I really liked it. I really, uh, you know, identified with that, so to speak. Right. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's it's very interesting to kind of say that in that way because looking at this from an astrological perspective, we can see that certain houses, uh, certain signs and things like that actually deal with travel. For example, like the ninth house deals with travel, uh, especially in the context of going after higher uh, spiritual uh, lessons or truth. So you mm -hmm. going to go visit an ashram or something like that or go visit an ancient site, those would be 11th house signs or ninth house things, the 11th house also deals with travel as well. You well know, ironically, so. both of us have a lot of that going on in our time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. you know, and it's, it's very true. Whenever I've traveled in my life, um, the, my income has all, always drastically increased. Like as soon as I start traveling, like it, it really is amazing. So, you know, that you might have a specific placements or things in your chart that staying where you are and stagnant is actually the worst thing you could do for yourself. And as soon as you travel, you will start activating certain placements and certain houses in your chart, you know? Um, so that's a, you know, a very interesting thing to look at. So, if, you know, you guys, you know, have never looked at your charts, you know, take the time to do that. Or if you're not familiar with how, you know, go find someone that knows how to and, mm -hmm. and start with that, because that might just be, you know, that might be the key to you unlocking like what you need to, or taking your life from being, you know, very average and mediocre and okay to living the life of your dreams just because, you know, there was some kind of experience that, that you wanted to have in this lifetime. So you ended up with those placements. And then whenever you actually follow through with those actions and things, you know, all those stuff gets activated. You get to have all those new experiences. Right. And largely uh, so far in this particular conversation, we've been framing things mostly from this kind of uh, idea of travel as a temporary like oh i'm going traveling but then what do people do they come back home but it can just as much if not more so uh apply to a complete permanent uh or at least semi-permanent change of location and you, because there's there's such an like infinite amount of opportunities 
that you can choose for yourself to reweave a new reality into your web of weird essentially and it, you know th that one place in that one country with those one people or one set of people or that one person that you meet like you know like obviously uh, when you and I cross paths the trajectory of our whole both of our lives changed drastically and you never know when or where you're going to meet that one person that has an opportunity for you or you form a, a strong friendship or a new, you know, a new like romantic relationship. I mean, there's, it's, there's no end to what could be in store for you. And the more you're staying in the same place, the more you are choosing to limit yourself in, in those experiences that you could have in this right. single lifetime that we're given or that we've chosen to incarnate in whichever way you choose to look at that. But right. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a little, uh, last little uh, quote that I wanted to, that we wanted to kind of share that, you know, we think kind of, you know, it sums, sums up a lot of this uh, generally. And it's from the Hobmall stanza 18. And it's the man who explores the world beyond his village will better understand the motivations of others. Mm. And that's really true. Like, if you, if you really want to understand the other people, what do you have to do? You have to get out there and experience other people, you know, and, you know, like our, you know, being of Germanic heritage, you know, um, a lot of our ancestors were merchants and Vikings, uh, very great travelers that made it all over the world, you know, so a lot of you might have, you know, travelers, you know, that it's in your blood, that, that call to adventure, you feel like it's just always there. And then when you start doing that, you know, you're, you're tapping into a, a legacy and things that, you know, your ancestors did for thousands of years. And now, now you're doing in your own way. It's a very mm -hmm. powerful thing, very powerful experience. So I definitely, you know, uh, hope people enjoyed uh, thinking about this from more of a, an experience of using travel at, for the purpose of personal and spiritual growth, you know, rather than just only doing it just for, you know, the pleasure of it. Right. Yeah. And if you did enjoy this content, if it made you think, maybe you shared a new perspective, go ahead and hit that like button and help, uh, help more people see this video. And we want to know from you, what's the favorite place that you've ever traveled? If you've, if you've ever been out of the country, especially, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. But that's going to wrap this episode up for this week. Um, a very uh, fun episode, I think. And again, just, uh, just a quick reminder, uh, if you wanted to rewatch that or see the replay of last week's uh, uh, webinar that we were promoting in our leadership episode, that link's down below. Also, check out that free initiation package we put together for, for you. Very value-based content, totally free. And uh, that's going to conclude tonight's episode. So, of course, until next time, until next week, be empowered, be inspired, and be in.